The Greenland ice sheet is one of the most important indicators of global climate change. In spring 2012, new research by Dr. Jason Box of Bird Polar Research Center suggested that the whiteness or reflectivity of Greenland's ice was changing over time, becoming darker, absorbing more solar energy, and expanding the area of surface melt. The paper predicted that within a decade, the process would spread surface melt over the entire area of the ice sheet, even the highest, coldest regions. The prediction was proven out sooner than the authors expected. And last summer, what happened was very rare, very, very rapid melt. Uh, so much so that the bridges and things down at uh, lower elevations in Greenland were being washed away by this unprecedented wave of meltwater coming off the glacier. And we understood more how that could happen uh, when the satellite data revealed that there were uh, at least one day when the entire surface of the ice sheet was uh, melting. The basic mechanism along with higher temperatures seems to be that those temperatures are causing ice to change color and to deform uh, its crystalline structure and, uh, and that changed color uh, is reducing the reflectivity of the ice and hence it's absorbing uh, more of the sun's energy and melting quicker. This is obviously um, scary. I was returning to Greenland to maintain measurements and this was the 24th of, of June. Uh, you know, I'll never forget this because I was sitting in the, the airport terminal and people uh, in the waiting area were glued to the TV screens watching fires in Colorado, Montana, Idaho. Um, just um, people riveted. Uh, you know, I'm on my way to Greenland. The the story I'd been looking at the reflectivity of Greenland and the the fact that the reflectivity at the highest elevations of the ice sheet was was already several percent below the the, pre the previous decade average. That's when the idea of well, do these wildfires I was hearing about Siberian and Alaskan tundra fires. Colorado is burning, there's all this smoke in the atmosphere. How much of that is depositing on the Greenland ice sheet, making it darker? Became this a driving question and, and I thought, we just have to get up to the upper elevations of the Greenland ice sheet and simply take some snow samples. Dust and aerosols are a well-known but not fully understood feature of the atmosphere. They come from human emissions, but also natural sources, including fire, ocean spray, pollen, volcanoes, and dust storms. Observations from satellites like NASA's Calypso provide some insights. Calypso's instruments look down at a narrow swath of atmosphere with each orbital pass. Recent Calypso data reveals wildfire smoke drifting over the Greenland ice sheet, but clearly more research is necessary. I, I, so I called Tom Painter at, um, at NASA, JPL. Tom is uh, he's a snow optics expert. He knows a tremendous amount about snow reflectivity. And I said, Tom, um, wildfires, uh, Greenland reflectivity, can we sample the snow and, and can you identify uh, wildfire soot? Can you distinguish wildfire or industrial soot? And he said, yes. He said, we've got some new microscope technology and some chemical analysis that we can really kind of fingerprint. Is this wildfire soot? Um, is it terrestrial dust? Uh, and so we have the technology to put the, the wildfire aspect of the, the reflectivity decline of Greenland into context. It's going to be important to know about because we're um, clearly increasing the amount of wildfire on the planet. In North America, the fire season is now two or two and a half months longer than it used to be as temperatures have risen and, and it's gotten more arid. So we're trying to, to do fundraising to um, get uh, up to Greenland and just dig a few snow pits in some key areas and, and make reflectance measurements in the field with a portable um, spectrometer 
Um, this is what Tom Painter and um, and Mackenzie Skiles will do, and then also bring back those those samples um, back to the lab. As you wrote in, in your article in Rolling Stone, Dr. Box is seeking to go up there and do do some more sampling of, of that ice to find out exactly where that soot is coming from. And so far he's been held up uh, in his fundraising efforts to make that happen. Yes. Um, there are moments when you one doesn't know whether to laugh or cry. I mean, you know, this is some of the most important research on Earth. And we probably shouldn't having to be, you know, going to the internet to try to raise money for it. But you know, you take one door handle off one door off one aircraft carrier someplace, and you could probably fund it for the rest of time. But um, that's not what our government's priorities are at the moment. Uh, there wasn't the money available for this. It'd be good if uh, the rest of us figured out how to come up with it. We want to crowdsource this project. This would be a first time that a, a, a science expedition got uh, used crowdsourcing to, to make it happen. We have only got about one third of our funding. And so we're creating a website called um, darksnowproject.org. Darksnowproject.org, you can donate there. Um, anything will help. We're about one third already to our funding goal. We're going to be then communicating this story at, at, as we're, we're preparing our expedition, uh, as we're going into the field, and when we return, we'll, we'll always be reporting using uh, you know this exciting medium of social media, uh, Twitter, Facebook. The the nice thing about um, supporting this project is that uh, supporters you know become involved in the science, and and we can credit all supporters for. Uh, making making this happen.